Emerging markets are looking very weak right now and cannot reverse this anytime soon. But what is not ever understood or anticipated is the counterparty risk. Each country buys the debt of another country, effectively making it connected. A problem for one is a problem for another. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what has happened with emerging markets. This is directly connected to the video I did previous to this, looking at Argentina increasing their interest rates to 60%. The currency has dropped to a record low. The same goes for Brazil and many others that are encountering such hardship right now in their financial markets. So what happens with all this counterparty risk? Who is affected by these emerging markets falling? Well, I want to show you something right here. The Italian deputy prime minister denied Italy is looking for help from the ECB. Now when they deny, that's usually a good sign that that's exactly what they're doing. This is after a media report suggested that the cabinet in Rome is reaching out to the Frankfurt-based Institute for a new round of government bond purchases. So they're suggesting maybe they're going to be going to the ECB and saying, can you give us a bailout? And they get into the details Right here, this newspaper reported earlier that Italy might be calling on the ECB to pass a new QE-styled program to shield its public debt from financial speculation and the threats of a rating downgrade. The program could have a different name, indeed, citing an unnamed official and providing no further details. Okay, so I want to make this known that it is not an official program that is happening right now. It is speculation, so we'll see, but perhaps there was some talks behind the scenes and a little bit of that information got leaked out. It's usually the way it is, whether it materializes or not. That's something very interesting because we're seeing the weakness appearing not just in areas like Latin America, whether we have uh, Argentina, Brazil, even South Africa is not doing well right now. We can see Turkey. It's all over the place, okay? So we have these issues happening, but look at Europe as well. Many European countries are looking very weak right now, whether that is Greece, Italy, Spain, and others, okay? So pay attention to what's going on in emerging markets, but also how that affects these other economies that are weakened as well. Now, you have to think to yourself, we have a country, for example, like Spain, that has purchased a lot of the debt, a lot of these has a lot of their uh, investments in Turkish banks and others. Okay, so they've been putting a lot of money in this country. What if Turkey slowly but surely falls further and further and further, or maybe quickly? They've got a lot of money in there. They've lost a lot, and that's not a good sign. Okay, so we're going to pay attention to that. But the same with Italy. They own a lot of these other countries' debt. And so if a country like Italy were to fall, then what happens to them? Of course, that's directly connected. All right. So let's show you what has occurred right now. They decided to put this rate hike in. So I did the video about the rate hike to 60%. And then what happens? Immediately, the value drops downward again. Nearing, you know, at the time of this recording, it's approaching that mark of 40. So from 30 to 40 didn't take long at all. A significant drop in the value of their currency in basically a couple trading sessions. Looking at this, I just basically wanted to highlight again, the IMF comes in for a bailout and immediately the currency just falls. It's as if it restores no confidence at all. That's the point of the bailout. Restore confidence, get the markets going again, get the liquidity happening, and then it does the exact opposite. That's what I always say. I always point that out to you. This right here, Brazil's currency, they decided to intervene while it was on the way down to its record low. Record low right now. Breaching that four mark, which I already suggested is, is a significant number, mostly psychologically, but also historically as well with the currency versus the US dollar. And it was 
right about to hit that level and they turned it around here in the trading session as I record this. So we'll see how it works out tomorrow if it turns around really. Usually their intervention only makes things worse. And to finish off the video, where people are most and least proud to be European. I don't know if you know these for yourself. Maybe you live in one of these countries. I'm noticing right at you know similarities right here whether we are looking at Finland, Norway, Denmark, Sweden all right at the top of that Finland 87 percent and of course these are always samples size you know it's a few, they probably get a few thousand people from each country or what have you so it's not necessarily going to be every single person but gives you an idea and the United Kingdom at the very bottom of the list, 62%. That shouldn't surprise anybody. It looks like a lot of countries more in the, on the western side, Switzerland, Italy, Germany, Austria, and so on, are towards the end of the list. So I just wanted to bring that to you. Hope you found it interesting. If you found the video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, it helps to support the channel. I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in schools, these two books have it all. You will learn everything you need to know all the way from the foundational principles, and there's no jargon in these books. You do not need to understand finance at all, but if you do, of course, it's certainly going to be relevant to what you know already, but I get into all the details. What you need to know is in these books, so check it out. Link is in the description of the video. And if you want the audiobook version, that's at themoneygps.com.